Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And um, this puzzle is a fascinating looking puzzle called Pullying Your Weight. Um, and it relies on, really rather beautifully, on, on the principles of, um, well, pulleys and one, one weight being heavier than the other. This has been a bit of an Achilles heel of mine. There was a, a puzzle in the Magpie by Mash which revolved moments and balancing objects depending on how far they were from a fulcrum and how heavy they were. And this is an area of, um, well, of puzzles where I am, am clueless. It may be that it's just moments. It may be that it's all of mechanics and it may be that it's all of physics that I don't understand. So it's good that that's the subject my daughter is studying at university because she fills a big gap. Um, anyway, that, that, that's struggles I've had in the past. We'll see if they translate into struggles I have today. The puzzles by Metagloria, who we have featured on the channel once before, I want to say, Kropke's Revenge. And my sincere apologies to the actual author of Kropke's Revenge if I have misremembered that that was by Metagloria. Um, anyway, who knows? Let's, let's have a look at this puzzle today anyway. But we will do that after we remind you, first of all, about Patreon, where you can have a go at the Nightmare Sudoku Pack. It is brilliant, by the way. We're getting so many um, plaudits and... Um, people delighted to have got through but that's partly because it's a struggle it's very hard to get through all 19 puzzles to get the shout out on the channel it's a little easier to get through five puzzles um, to get into the prize draw but it's not that easy so do give it a try if you're up for the challenge it's brilliant stuff um, and thanks very much to Riff Clown and Wisteria Fool who came up with the idea oh and there is a as of two days ago Make sure you have downloaded the document again, because when you get to puzzle 18, there's a there's a marking that needs to be in the puzzle rather than not in it. Um, now, we've also, of course, got Gas 2. That our newest app is available on all the platforms now, so do check that out. Um, it comes up a couple of times in every video as a, a, uh, a card that you can click on to get it on Steam, but you can also get it on App Store and Android. Uh, which is Google Play, and we highly recommend it, of course, as we do all our apps. We're not the only people who highly recommend them. They are very popular and uh, well worth just a tiny bit of money, even in a cost of living crisis. So those are going on. There's also links to the Discord server, to Sven's Sudoku pad, to our merchandise, uh, and to everything connected with the channel, the catalogue of our puzzles, where you can not only check which puzzle Metagloria did before and if there was more than one. But also that's where you could find that video I was mentioning the other day that I posted on a Christmas day where I failed to solve a puzzle. Anyway, um, links under the description field and the first link is to this puzzle. I'm going to go through the rules now. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Hooray, we're going to put one to nine in every row, every column and every three by three box. Neighbouring digits along a green line must differ by at least five. So you could put a one and six in there or a one and nine, but do not put a three and seven in there. They're not allowed. The difference is not enough. Um, so those are German whisper lines. <laughs> then we have an intriguing variant of the XV rule. Cells separated by a V, X or XV must sum to five, 10 or 15 respectively. And Metagloria has very generously given us exactly one of each. So those two add up to five, those two add up to 10, those two add up to 15. Now, what about the cages? Digits in cages may not repeat, which is gonna matter for a couple of them. For pairs of cages connected by green lines, if one cage hangs lower than the other, it must have a larger total. So the total of that cage is larger than that one. But if they're balanced, they must have the same total. So these two cages in the middle do have the same total. So really there's nothing to trip me up with my misunderstandings of mechanics, um, but we will see how we go. Do give it a try on the link under the video. That's all the rules there are. Not a given digit in the puzzle, <laughs> three little XVs. So I hope these green lines are gonna do some work because I don't think the cage totals are gonna do much till much later. I don't know. I mean, I'm fascinated to find out how it works. It's called pullying your weight, which is 
the sort of pun that appeals to a dad like me. But we are going to get underway. Let's restart the clock and let's get cracking. So, okay, I'm going to quickly run through the three things that I like to remind us about German whisper lines. The first is five can never appear on them. Uh, so the five in the final column is in one of those cells and the five in box five is in one of those. Uh, five can't appear on a German whisper line because there is no Sudoku digit far enough away from five to allow it to be a neighbor. Um, now, the next thing is the corollary to that is that the digits alternate in terms of polarity along the line. And by polarity, I mean being higher than five or lower than five. So we could mark four of these digits and then that one. We alternate all the way along the line with either high, low, high, low, high, low, or low, high, low, high, low, high. Um, and that is the only way you can maintain this difference of five between the digits. The other third lesson is that four and six can never appear on these lines where their neighbors can see each other, which sounds a very prurient way of describing neighbors peering at each other. But in fact, all it means is you couldn't put a four here, for instance, because the only digit four can sit next to on a German whispers line is nine. And those two nines are in the same box and column. They see each other in that way. And therefore, you can't have a four here. And actually, that is really helpful on this line. Because you can't have four or six in these purple cells. Oh, sorry, this is all totally obvious. I've been doing this as though we don't know whether purple is high and green is low or the other way around. But, of course, we've got this 15... Um, domino at the top and 15 is going to be connecting either 6 and 9 or 7 and 8. All of those are high digits so purple is high in this case. Green is low. I can make them orange for high and blue for low which feels like the right temperatures for a thermometer. Now this is a 6, 9 or 7, 8 pair so we've now got all four oranges for this box. If you think about those high digits, six, seven, eight, nine, there's four of them. The low ones, one, two, three, four, there's four of those. So in every row, every column, every box of this Sudoku, we're gonna have four blues, four oranges, if I get round to coloring the whole grid, and one other white cell containing a five. Um, and, hmm, I've got four, Oh yeah, I've got four blues in the final column and I've got four oranges in box three. That's lovely. This cell, okay, forget the pencil marking of fives in column nine. That's not relevant. Just look at this cell. This cell sees four orange cells in box three and four blue cells in column nine. So it can't be another blue because you'd have five in column nine. It can't be another orange or you'd have five in box three. Therefore, it stays white and it's a five. And in fact, because we've got the four orange, we know that these other two in box three are blue. We can do the count in column nine, and we know that this cell is orange at the bottom. And we know what number is in it because of the third rule of German whispers, which is that none of these cells can contain six because their neighbors all see each other and you can't have two ones in this column. So the six is down here at the bottom. This is a seven, eight, nine triple. Now, where can you have a four in the blue? Oh yeah, and there's only one place. Oh, brilliant. This can't be a four because its neighbors would both be nines and this is the same. This one also can't be a four, but the neighbors aren't in the same column this time. They're in the same box, but that's enough to stop them being nines. So none of these can be a four. We can fill the four in, in the column. We've got a really good start on this puzzle. Um, I'm also going to tell you that this digit can't be a three. And that's because it sees a seven, eight pair. And therefore it must see seven on one side. And we said at the beginning, you can't have a three next to a seven. However, wherever three is in the column, it will bring eight next to it. But I don't think we can resolve that now. This, ah, look, that being seven or eight is incredibly useful. It means this is a six, nine pair 
because it can't be a 7-8 pair adding up to 15 anymore. And we're going to go further because this cell is on the green line and its neighbours see each other. If it was a 6, they'd both have to be 1. Oh, this is lovely. We're getting loads of this done. 7 or 8 there. Now, where's 4 in this box? Well, it's not here. Hmm, okay, I don't actually know where it is. But I do know it's not touching a cell that contains only a 7 or an 8. Because 4 always has to only touch 9. But I mean, that's quite significant. Is this cage any use? I don't think so. With two white cells, we're adding up to 10 there. Somewhere between 8 and 12 here. There's a lot of freedom for things to put in these. So... I'm still going to cling to my belief that we're not going to get very far with looking at the cages yet. Even though we've already placed six digits in the puzzle. I'm quite pleased with that. Now, we can do exactly the same here. These two are both low because they only add up to five. They're from one, two, three, four. Now we know about the alternation along the German Whispers line. And we can colour orange for the high digits. We've got four blues in this box. Oh, no, look, we know where five goes because it's got to be in a white cell and it's ruled out of those two by the five in the corner. So five goes here. These two can't be blue because we've got four blues. They're orange. Now we've got four oranges in the first column. So even though this pulley line isn't as long as the pulley line in column nine. Oh, but OK, down here. We have five and blue, and there isn't really a way of pencil marking that. I suppose it looks a bit like that. One of these is five and the other is blue. Now, where can four go? It can't go there or there in column one because their neighbours see each other. In fact, I think we can place it in box one. It can't be, sorry, it can't be in any of those cells because their neighbours all see each other. Those one, that one has neighbours there, that one has neighbours up and down, that one has neighbours in the same box. So we can place four in the box. There we go. And then we get a two, three pair here. Now this is going to give us some elimination. That can't be a one, but more importantly, this can't be two or three. That doesn't actually do much. Um, this is one, two, or three. Four has to be somewhere down here. It can't be there because of the four in row eight already. So four's in one of those two cells. I have a feeling it feels likely to be there to me, but uh, let's not go on gut feelings. They're, um, they're not a way to solve the puzzle. Now, let's use six and nine. I'm just going to do the pencil marking here. Six in one of those cells. Nine in one of those, seven and eight. I don't think the whisper lines tell us any more than that, which Sudoku revealed. Now, what about this whisper line then? Okay, I'm going to start by alternate marking. I'm choosing different colours because I don't know which is orange and which is blue. So I'm going with green and purple. I don't think that gives anything away. These two could both be orange. In fact, these can be four or six in this box. I mean, I know we've got all four greens here, but I don't think I can draw conclusions from that. Oh, I can colour this cell, not blue or orange, but green, because this 10 which looks a lot less helpful than the 5 and the 15 in this puzzle, but at least it tells us they're different. One is higher than 5 and one is lower than 5 to add up to 10. Hmm, I don't think they're telling me anything else. Now, what about this digit? It is coloured. It is not a 5. So, we also know that it's not a 2 or a 3, because we've got a pair in the row, or a 7 or an 8. So it's one, four, six, or nine, but we do know that it's not four or six, don't we? Yes, we do, because its neighbours see each other in row four. So that is one or nine, and that gives us a pair, a one nine pair, because of the X, which is a surprise pair to get. There's a five in one of those. 
Ah, nine had to be in one of these cells because of this box and where nine is in box three. So nine's in one of those cells and it's not here. And now we know, now we know the polarities. Purple is high, so purple becomes orange in this puzzle. Green becomes blue. Now, we did know, didn't we, that these... No, it's these that couldn't be four. So they're from one, two, three, and that's a triple in the row. These definitely have a four in. So one of these two is a nine, because the four must be flanked on both sides by nines. Um, can we use the triple? I don't see how immediately. What do we do next? We're getting nothing. I mean, I've got one colored cell in each cage, apart from the ones on the right. And they haven't given me anything. Okay, these two cells can... T oh, look, we got a one there. That's giving us a two, three pair. That makes this a four. Um, up at the top. That makes this a one. Now this is a pair. It's a four-six pair. In one case, we're using four and six. Wherever the four is here must have a six above it, but I don't know what to do with that. Two, three, six, one, four. Um... One. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where we go next. But I mean, we've made good progress. I don't mind having a little semi-break for now while we think about how to make further progress. The, oh right, these can't be six, can they? Because their their neighbours see each other. So we know where six goes in the column now. There it is. In the corner. Don't think we're going to get a three in the corner in this puzzle. This isn't six, because it's next to a two or a three now. Oh, these aren't sixes because their neighbours see each other. So we've got seven, eight, nine, triple in the middle row. Interesting, but it doesn't, it's not acting on any cells that I've done any thinking about at all. Oh, I suppose six in the central box now has to be in one of these. Um, I was going to say and six therefore is in one of those two, but actually six can be on the ends of this pulley. Seven, eight, nine in box four. Yeah, okay, where do five and four go in this box? I mean, it's nothing to do with the seven, eight, nine triple, it's just the pencil marking. We've got five and four there, so they can't be here, so they're in these two cells. We knew, actually, they were in those three. Now, where does one go in the box? That also can't go in these three cells. So now we've placed one in column one. And these are all from two, three, four, five. Um, this is a two, three, six triple. That's all that's left in the column. What's it telling us about the box? Not much yet. Still got quite wide ranging minima and maxima. Not seven, 18 minimum, 23 maximum. And that has to be lighter or way less than this one. I mean, all that's telling me, I think, is that these two have to add up to at least 10. And that's incredibly unhelpful because I've now seen I've got a 7, 8, 9 triple down here. Actually, I can colour them. I've got a 7, 8, 9 triple here as well. These are from 1, 2, 3, 6. And definitely include a 6, which is definitely in this cage. That's not a nine. Um, 
now. Ah, look, yes, let's use the blue one, two, three triple on that cell. Lovely, that can't be two or three. So that's a six. Now, this upper cage is getting quite full. It's got a reduced difference between its maximum and minimum. The minimum is now 16. The maximum is now 19. Oh, well, this, these cages are now useless because this one always has to be more. The absolute minimum for this cage, given the pencil marking, is 20, 7 and 8 and 2, 3 there, which is higher than the absolute maximum for this one. So <laughs> they're not telling us anything beyond the Sudoku. That's, um, that's a little galling. Right, what else do we know in the puzzle? That digit is in one of those two cells. Not interesting. Sometimes with these whisper puzzles, you can do something interesting with these pairs. Right, one of these is a three. Okay, if that's a three, it's surrounded by eight, nine there. And then this cell becomes a seven. If that's a three, it's surrounded by eight, nine in column one. And this cell becomes a seven. So at least one of those two cells is a seven. Oh, and they do operate on, they operate on these two cells. What I mean by that is if, at least one of those is a seven. Well, they both see this cell, so that can't be a seven. And they both see this cell, so that can't be either. I don't know if that really advances us, but it's quite interesting to find out. If that's a two, this is a seven. If that's a two, this is a seven. That's a slightly different way of looking at it. And it gives us that one of these two is a seven, or both of them. No, not both of them. And I'm totally wrong anyway. Two does not mean that it has to have a seven next to it. I'm very sorry. That is looking at these relationships the wrong way around. So I will pipe down about that. It wasn't true. I mean, they've got no fill here and almost none here. These 10 down there and either eight or nine up there in the cage that has to be lighter. What on earth use is all this stuff? What, are, oh no, okay, there's a four in one of those two cells because I know there's a four in one of those two, so all of these are stopped from being four. I don't know where I can actually get any information from for the next step. This, is this a four? Well, this box is useless, I remember that. Oh look, I've got a six, seven, eight, nine quad in this row. Ah. Um, so, one of these two is now a six. This is not a six. Ah, hang on, hang on. We already had a six in this cage in one of those two. So it's not this one that's a six. The orange digit that's a six in this row is here. Ah, now that is useful. Not just because it fixes where six is in the cage, and we'll get back to the cages soon, but because what's next to a six on a green line? It's always a one. That's gonna take one out of these cells. These are now from two, three, or four. Oh, look, these are blue as well. Those are orange. Let's get, let's get the colouring up to date. But these being blue, there's a two, three, four triple. Because I got that one, I see. So this becomes a one. Doesn't do anything. Um, does it do anything? I don't know how it does if it does. 
somewhere in this column we've got a 3 8 pair because 3 must take 8 and the other one is a 2 7 pair. Oh, can we do the same sort of thing with 2 3? One of these is a 3. No, I don't think we can. Well, there's just not quite enough to play with over this side. If that was a three. Okay, this cell is five or six. It sees seven, eight, nine in the row and one, two, three, four in the box. This has to be it's not one, two, three, or four. All of these, in fact, this is five, seven, or eight. We've got one, two, three, four used in column four. That is the point I'm making here, which is not much of a point, but it's true. This can't be nine either. So five, six, seven, or eight. This one could be any of them. Now, what have we got? The minimum for this lighter box. No, the maximum for this lighter box. Is that the way to look at it? I really don't understand moments. 987 nine, and a 1 is 25. No, the minimum for the lighter box. That's more interesting and more restricted. 567 and a 1. 19 minimum. This box must add up to at least 20. So this pair is at least adding up to 10 and that means it must have a higher digit in it a high digit in it it must have at least one orange in it and I don't know what to do with that information ah oh, okay and this isn't going to work I don't think but one of those two has to be a three Whichever one it is, is next to an 8 or a 9. So if that's a 3, this is an 8. This would have to be a 9. Look, this can't be a 7, can it? Because it can't be a 7 because this can't be a 1-2 pair. 7 would have to be surrounded by 1 and 2. This one can be and probably is. Oh, hang on, hang on. We're getting somewhere here. One of these is a 4 above a 9. On the other side, if it's here, it's 4, 9, 1, and then this is... 8 surrounded by a 2-3 pair. That does work. Ah, I don't know. I thought I was maybe onto the puzzle and I wasn't. Um, right, I need to do something cleverer. What are you up to, Metagloria? And why can't I see it? Is it these cages? There's just too many digits. I, I don't know how to go about filling those cages. Or indeed, all I've discovered about this pair is it has to be at least 10. If it was exactly... Oh, okay. What about this cell? It sees one, a two, three pair, six, nine. Totally uninteresting. Lots of candidates. Seven, eight, nine, one, six. Oh, I'm not getting this at all. Um, right. One of these is a 7 and has a 2 beside it in the column. Oh, I've got that 6 looking up at a 4-6 pair. 
It was only yesterday that Simon left a six that he'd marked in the grid and was giving him all sorts of things just sitting there. And here I am again doing it. I dare say my curse has been resting on this six. Anyway, we get, we get a four there. That gives us a nine here. Now, now what? Uh, this could still be an eight, four there, nine here. This seven, eight pair, right. Yes, oh, lovely. Right, one of these is a seven. That one cannot be next to a three. So one of these two, or both of them, are twos. At least one of them is a two. That is really important when you look at this cell, which they both see. If at least one of these two is a two, that must be a three. And now it's looking straight back at both of them. They both must be twos. And that doesn't tell us where seven and eight go. But the fact that one of those has to be a seven has deciphered all this. That two is gonna sort out three and two over here. We've done the twos. We're gonna put a three in one of these cells. Um, this has become a three in the final column. That has to be next to eight. Lots of this is gonna unwind now. We've got, well, I think so. We've got that seven, eight pair, nine, two, one. These are from three, four, five, six. type. Right. 493. Oh, we don't know what that is. Oh, bother. Oh, three there puts eight here on the end of this German whisper. So that gave us a seven here. Are there, there's other, oh, six is orange, four is, four is blue. We're going to need a one somewhere down here. This cell's not a six. Maybe there was more I could do. Once one of these is a three. Oh, what? No, we learned that, that one of each of those is a seven. I think that was the whole lesson from here. I don't think there was any more to um, extract out of it. So what about this cage? This digit is one, two, five, or seven. Oh, I'll tell you what. One of those two is definitely a one in this column. Um, one of these two in this column is definitely a one. And that means there are two ones in those four cells, only one of which can be in the bottom row. So this cage is going to have a one in it. So, okay, what does the cage add up to now? Eight plus six plus a one in one of these two cells is 15. The other digit is going to take it somewhere between 17 and 22. And this cage is going to have to have the same total. Does it need a one? It can't have a one because there's a one in one of these two cells, and that's using up the one for the box. Somewhere between 17 and 22, it can't have a one. Two, three, four are the minimum, would take it up to 15. Ah, there's still quite a bit of leeway. Or degrees of freedom, which is a shame. I thought I might be onto it. No, I don't, I still don't think we can use these Flipping cages. Oh, seven can't repeat in the cage. So this cage adds up to somewhere between 25 and 19. This one could add up to 25 if it had an eight, seven pair in. Although actually that would break. It would stop that being an eight. But the trouble is the bottom end of the range was 19 and this only needs to add up to, this has to be a heavier cage. So, sorry, I'm not trying to equal them, am I? I'm trying to make this one bigger. And this pair have to add to 10. So there is a high digit 
that's what we said earlier. There is either an 8 or a 7, or both, in these cells. Oh, where does the 2 go in there? There is no 2 in them. Is that right? No, it's not necessarily right. They could be 2 and 8, making 20 here. Then this would have to add up to 19 by having a, five, a 6 here and a 5 here. So you'd have 5, 2, 8, and 3, 4, 7 still to place. Ah! Oh! It's still not about the cages. It must be at some point, this puzzle, but it's not yet. Oh, that is five or seven. That is two or seven. I'm just looking at these digits being ruled out and what they leave in the rest of the column. Um, these ones are either five, six, seven or five, six, eight. I'm, I'm missing some very obvious Sudoku thing, I imagine, here, just as I was virtually doing earlier. I doubt that it's a special rule that's holding me up at the moment. I think it's just my general incompetence. There's a four in one of those two cells. That's just... that's not going to do anything. Two is somewhere here. The only way it can be in the cage is with an eight. In which case, that would end up being a 7. Oh, it's so close, and yet it is not yielding. For I really hope I'm not just missing some huge obviousness. There is absolutely every chance that I am. Four nine five six one. Oh gosh. Okay, let's go back to column one. There might be more. If that was four, that's nine, that's eight, that's seven, that's two. Oh, look, I've got an eight there. Oh. oh, how long has the curse been hovering over that silly number? Oh, that hurts. I'm so useless sometimes. Right, there's no eight. This is a three, five, six triple. In fact, no, it's not. No, it's not. One, eight, two, three, nine, four. It's a seven, five, six triple. That's what this is. Seven, five, six there. One, nine here. Right, two, three, four, ah, two, three, four here. They all see an eight. We can place eight in the central column. That's there. That's a five, seven pair. We can do three and two in the top row. Oh my goodness. It was all available just from that s complete failure to spot something. Um, two, three, four, and six. These are from five, seven, nine can't have a two there. Right, now let's try and balance these two cages now. This looks a bit more interesting. So, minimum here is six, two, three, five adds up to 16. Minimum here, eight, six, one, two is 17. That's annoyingly close. Maximum is, there's got to be a one in these, I remember, 15, 22. Maximum here, 15, 18, 22. These are still resisting balancing. Okay, do Sudoku instead, Mark, and keep spotting everything this time. Right, come on, what have we got? We've got a seven in one of those two, which has to be next to a two in one of those two. Now that's obvious, that's been there forever. But that means one of these two is a two, and two is not down in these bottom cells. I don't know what that tells me. Um, one of these is a three, and has an eight, nine pair. It looks like it might well be that one. I don't know. Um,
it better not be more just blinking obvious Sudoku because it's really painful not spotting it. And you're asking me, why don't you just spot it then? Well, because I just can't. I can't do it sometimes. Um, is it these cages again? I still don't know if two is in this cage. Okay, what's that digit? Two, three, four, or five? Ooh, I could nearly colour it low, couldn't I? One in the row is in one of those two positions. I don't think... I mean, these these totals had so much range and were so unhelpfully different. Okay, eight or seven had to be in this cage, didn't it? And the only way two was in it is if it was a two-eight pair, five and six there. Oh, this can't be four, that's pretty clear, nor can this. Um, I'm sure this isn't... Again, I've already missed two easy steps, and I think I'm missing another one now. What is it? Seven, eight, nine, two, one. There's a three in one of those. I've said that ages ago. Four in one of those. I've got those pencil marked in. Six and nine. Six is in one of those two. Nine is in one of those two. Then there's five and eight. Eight could be anywhere there. And five is not really ruled out of anything. Oh, let's do colouring. I haven't done that for a bit. Blue, orange. These are all blue, which is a bit surprising. Um, one of these is a five. Fourteen, fifteen, somewhere between seventeen and twenty-two, somewhere between sixteen and twenty-two. Maybe something happens. If that is the one, then that's a one, and that has to be one. But if that's the one, that's a one, and that is one. One of these two is one, so the one in box nine is somewhere here. Useless. Seven. Oh, look, all of these can't be seven. Wow. Seven is in the cage. And now two can't be, because then the cage would only add up to 19. And it's got to be heavier than this cage, which has a minimum of 19 now. So two is not in the cage. Two is here and is blue. Seven's in the cage. Does it have to be in with eight? I don't know, but never mind. Let's look at taking two out of those cells. Um, that's a three, four, five triple now. So we can fill in one and two in box seven. That's huge. That's one. This is not one. Now there's only two possible totals for this gauge. 20 and 22. Um, oh, that's not two. So we've got a two here. Now, that is odd. We're coming to 22. We're going to learn the parity of this. Eight plus an odd number takes us to an odd number, and we need another odd number to get us to 22. Right, or 20. 9, 11. This is either a 9 or an 11. Well, it's not an 11. 6, 3, 2, 9 is the same total, I believe. 15, 20 as 8, 6, 1, 5. Yes. There we go. Right, let's colour away. I think we're finishing now. That's taken me a long time. All I had to do was see that seven had to go in the cage and I was home. That's not quite as obvious as the stuff I was missing earlier. So, there. 
Um, right, this is three, that's four, this is five, that four feels incredibly helpful. Let's just do the colouring first, because four has to sit next to nine. That sorts out the whole of the column. This has become two, that's three. We've got nine and eight surrounding the three, just like we knew we would. Um, seven and five up here, one of those gets a colour, the other doesn't. This is not seven, this is not seven, so seven is here, that gets a colour. This is a known digit, it's a five, that gets no colour, one must go here. Three and eight to place. Now, this final cage on the right is going to come into play now, surely. So, 17, either 20 or 28 to be heavier than R. Now that that is a 5 or a 6, oh, this has become a 5. This is all actually, it's, yes, it is all done. The whole row's done. There we go. So, we know the total of the higher cage is 22. This has to be more than 22, so we need an 8 here, because 3 would not get that job done. There we go. Thank you to those crates or whatever it was we were balancing up. Three, four, five, one, seven, two, nine, six, eight. We get a five, a four. And then before we do the last pair, let's finish off the coloring. Eight, six are high. Three, four are low. Hopefully all the fives are white. And if I've got all the colors right, well, even if I haven't, the machine won't know. There we go. That is the correct solution to the numbers part, at least. Very nice puzzle, Meta Gloria. Very interesting. I mean, it absolutely wasn't moments and mechanics that foxed me here. It was spotting very ordinary Sudoku eliminations. Um, and that served me right for mocking Simon for a, not spotting a six in his puzzle. I, I wasn't really mocking. I was just mentioning. But, hey, it may have come across that way. And certainly the gods who are in charge of bringing down those with hubris clearly felt that that was what was going on. Uh, so apologies for being hubristic and uh, for taking up more of your time than was necessary this evening. I expect to see plenty of times solving faster than mine in the comments. And thank you to Metagloria for the puzzle. It's brilliant. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.